Welcome back there, boys and girls. It's time to talk about argumentation or the art of winning arguments. You ever been in an argument? <laughs> of course you have. You're teenagers. Who hasn't been in an argument? Usually uh, with, with your parents, right? You're arguing with your parents why you shouldn't be in trouble because you didn't really do the thing that you definitely actually did and really know you should be in trouble for. And probably you lose that argument because you uh, might not understand the subtle nuances of what we call argumentation. Today's video is to help you out with that. Here's a mnemonic device that makes it pretty easy to remember that anytime you give an argument, anytime you're answering a question in science, you can treat that like an argument. We need to be using what's called claim evidence reasoning, or remember to be clever. So the title of today's PowerPoint is even, how clever are you? I guarantee you'll be pretty clever after these words from our sponsor. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have sponsors. That's ridiculous. I mean, look at the quality of this video. I'm wearing the same clothes that I've been wearing for the last three videos. There's no way, you know, like I have a team of editors. It's not sponsors, we a real channel. Claim evidence reasoning. This is how you give really bulletproof arguments. This is how you answer questions in science. This is how you're going to construct your arguments or your, uh, your statements, your papers, your ideas in English class. This is how you're going to crush essays for a history class. It's all related and you'll find that almost every teacher in the high school is going to be talking to you about this at some point. Claim evidence reasoning. Basically, you should sort of pretend that every time you say something, there's, there's like a, like a two-year-old, like, why? But why? But why? That's why we need reasoning. We need to explain why does this evidence support the claim? Why does this make sense? Why is it like that? What is happening? How does that work? But why? But why? Like a two-year-old. That's why we need reasoning. Evidence. I want you to pretend like there's like a... No, let's say like an eight-year-old, like a really snotty, like second grader, like, yeah, yeah, prove it, prove it, yeah. If you give claim evidence reasoning, it's gonna be really hard to argue against because the only way to win an argument against someone using claim evidence and reasoning is to then give a counter argument using claim evidence, reasoning, and rebuttal. And that's a ton of work. Ain't nobody got time for that. Again, make sure you're being clever. You're gonna give your claim, which is basically the answer to the question or what it is you know. So you're asked the question, what would you normally write down as the answer? That is your claim. Then for science class, you need to move on beyond that. Usually, you'll have a little reminder reminding you to be clever or use claim evidence reasoning. However, this should be like automatic. You should be, anytime you're thinking of giving an answer, you should be thinking, okay, where's my evidence? How do I prove it to that snotty little second grader? So evidence is how you know it. You got your claim, what you know, your evidence, how you know it, and then you need to include some reasoning, which is how that makes sense. For reasoning, we're really looking for some scientific concepts. So this is where you've been learning about some stuff in class, you've learned some scientific concepts. This is basically, you can treat this like your teacher is all like, well, let's see how well you've learned the science. So this reasoning is really important. It's also the hardest part. So we're gonna save that for last. We're gonna practice even claim, back up that claim with evidence, give the reasoning, or what it is you know, how you knew that, and how that evidence makes sense. Because sometimes you have evidence that really doesn't make sense. Reasoning is where you can address that, like a lab went wrong or something like that happened. Anytime you're gonna answer a claim evidence reasoning question, you should start out by giving yourself a lot of room on your paper and writing a big C for your claim, big E for your evidence, and then a big old R, and by big old R, I mean like give yourself a lot of space on the paper. Don't just go, I drew a really large R. No, a lot of space, not a really big R. Leave yourself a lot of room for your reasoning because as you get deeper and deeper into science, your reasoning could be like a paragraph long. I recommend writing down the C, the E, and the R before you answer any clever question or really any question that's an essay open-ended question in science because this is what your teachers are gonna be looking for and it's gonna remind you, like you can easily look back at it and be like, okay, I see my claim, right there's my evidence, crap, forgot the reasoning, get back in there, do some reasoning. Maybe you did a claim, maybe you did some reasoning, oh, now you need some evidence. When we talk about evidence, we need Data. I want to see numbers and stuff in your answer. Did you just do a lab? You best believe for your evidence, you're going to be quoting some of that data. Let's practice, shall we? 
I want you to tell me who the best musical artist of 2020 is. You're gonna be preparing this and you're gonna be coming into class ready to defend your choice. I don't care who your friends pick, I want your choice. Make sure your evidence, you're gonna need some stuff with numbers, right? Feel free to look online. Billboard's website is gonna be super useful. That's actually how like radio uh, disc jockeys and like the nerds of the internet, that's how they will actually rank and measure how good an artist is. But some of the other things you can talk about other than billboard position could be like how much money they made. Maybe they've got X number of top 10 hits. Maybe they're sitting at number one on the billboard charts right now. Average ticket sales, maybe, okay, they're not putting out a bunch of singles, but they're selling out stadiums and they're able to charge 50 bucks a head to do it. Maybe they've won a bunch of awards, you know, Grammys and whatnot. Once you've picked your claim and your evidence, then you're good. We'll talk about the reasoning tomorrow in class when we see each other. That's right, there's more video, but do this first and then we'll talk about what's next. Yeah, yeah, pause the video, come back to it, come on. All right, so we have two more questions we need to work on. First one's about Sammy. Sammy has some plants grown in three different locations of Mrs. Shaw's countertop. Who's Mrs. Shaw? I don't know, because I stole this question from somebody on the internet, but we're going with it. So we got Mrs. Shaw's countertop. You got plant A, plant B, plant C. Here the heights are on day one. Here the heights are on day five. I wonder, ooh, some chance for evidence. Because they all started at the same height, as long as you mention that they all start at the same height, you don't need to subtract these. However, best practice would be do a little subtraction, see which one actually grew the most. You can say plant B grew one centimeter, that sort of thing. Go, give me claim, evidence, reasoning. Answer this question, what effect does sunlight have on the growth of a plant? So remember, your claim should be saying, you know, something about the sun, something about plants. Evidence should have some of these numbers in it, not just random numbers, definitely not all the numbers, just pick out the important numbers. And then your reasoning, uh, you should probably be name dropping like photosynthesis stuff like that. Next one, we got Bob. He wants to eat some healthy breakfast. He's got breakfast A, breakfast B, use the nutrition information, give claim evidence reasoning. Claim which breakfast item is healthier. Which one should Bob be eating for breakfast? Evidence, use some of these numbers and stuff. Again, not all of them. Don't just copy the whole chart down and be like, well, there they are. There's a big difference between using something and just putting it down. For more on that, watch my hammer video so you can really understand the difference between using an object and just placing something down on the paper. And then give me some reasoning. You gotta explain why this makes sense. Why, whichever one you pick to be healthier, why those numbers are saying that it's healthier. This would be where you could talk about some of the stuff that you've talked about in health class before. Again, these are really long answers. This should take you a fair amount of time. We're gonna discuss all this together. This is your homework. Be ready for action. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Maybe you could become a patron of the channel on my Patreon. No, I don't have a Patreon. Are you crazy? Just, just bring me candy. That'll make me happy.